Good morning, my friends, and welcome to this, the Curate Study, for our fourth Sunday after Trinity. Uh, um, my name is Reverend Mark Kerslake, and no matter who you are, where you are, or what you believe, it is really good to have you back with us in the Curate Study for this Sunday service. Now, this is a particularly special Sunday service for a whole host of different reasons. So, first of all, um, it is important because this is the first Sunday for what seems like forever um, that we will be allowed back to worship in our bricks and mortar churches. There are all kinds of restrictions being imposed, some of them understandable, uh, but it is a momentous day for us because we need to remember that never in the history of the Church of England have all its churches been shut in this manner. So the reopening of them is a very, very significant day for huge numbers of people. Not actually, not just in this country and not just in the Church of England, of course, but around the world in many different churches and other religious buildings. It's also a significant day for us in the United Kingdom because it was on this day in 1948 that our National Health Service was launched. Uh, free health care um, for anybody, no matter who they were when they turned up at a doctor's surgery or a hospital and that health service has been truly remarkable in this awful period of virus that we've seen ourselves in and we owe a massive debt of, debt of gratitude to all of the people that work within it so that's significant just one other notice today i'd like to flag up that this tuesday the 7th is our mission community telephone interactive telephone service uh, prayer service so once a month the mission community all four churches gather to pray for the world our country, our parishes, our church and individuals within it. So if you'd like to become involved in that um, t interactive telephone prayer service, please drop me a line at fromthecuratesstudy at gmail.com and I can let you have the details. And that's run by one of our church wardens, Ian Spicer. And that's another announcement I have to make. Um, we are extremely pleased to announce that Ian has been selected for reader training to become a, a, a reader. It's a, a lay ministry, a lay um, preaching and leading ministry within the Church of England. It's a really significant thing for us and we're hugely pleased with that. So well done, Ian. So let's begin our service as we always do with the collect, the church's prayer for today, which links us with Anglican churches all over the world where a prayer like this one will be being, be being said or read aloud uh, to millions and millions of Christians. The Church's Prayer for the fourth Sunday after Trinity. O oh God, the protector of all that trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou, being our ruler and guide, we may also pass through things temporal, that we lose not hold our hold on things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ our Lord's sake, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now it's time for our first hymn.
this time of, uh, of, of the week in our Sunday service, we always have a confessional prayer. Because if you're like me, I'm sure there'll be many times this week when you regret something you've thought, uh, that you've said, or possibly that you've done. Um, and when perhaps our actions have fallen short of the standards that God would set for us in bringing glory to him. So let us confess our sins to the God, the God who loves us. Let's confess our part in the shortcomings of the world, its pride and its selfishness, its greed and its divisions, and its problems. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and we repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sins and renew within us a right spirit that we might be restored to the joy of, of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now know again that you are God's forgiven people, loved beyond all measure. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you to his image, to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our reading for today is from the book of Psalms. In fact, it is Psalm 150, one of the very short Psalms. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise him and his unequalled greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with a loud clanging of cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Almost sounds like a prayer, that doesn't it? That psalm. So now a reflection on Psalm 150. So this morning, actually, I intend to talk to you more about the Psalms in general, all of the Psalms, actually. Um, but don't worry, I'm not going to preach my way through the, all 150 Psalms. I uh, but I want to talk to you about the book of Psalms in general. So, as I've said, the book of Psalms contains 150 psalms and Psalm 150, clearly the final psalm, is a psalm of pure praise and worship. And it's easy to imagine that as our churches have reopened and the various other things we have in our lives to celebrate, that's how we may all be feeling at the moment. But to be honest with you, it's not entirely how I'm feeling. Let me explain. So I've spoken many times before about the book of Psalms as a prayer book um, and the title of the book, Psalm, Psalms or the Psalter as it's sometimes known, comes from some very old Greek translations of, of the what's called the Septuagint, which is the original um, Hebrew Bible. Uh, where they were refer where they where the book was named after a word which referred mainly to the harp and the lyre and the lute and the idea of songs being sung and their accompaniment. Um, but it also has a second meaning, or the, the traditional Hebrew title uh, has a second meaning. So the traditional Hebrew was tefillot, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, meaning prayers. And the Book of Psalms contains prayers for almost every imaginable part of the human experience. And it, in some respects, it's a collection of collections that represents the final stage of a work that spanned centuries by many different authors. The Book of Psalms was probably completed in the third century BC. So that's around 2300 years ago. And it was certainly referred to as the Book of Psalms by the first century um, of AD, the, the current millennia that we're in. So many theologians group the 150 psalms into five different subsections. And like most ancient documents, and two, over 2,000 years old, it is a truly ancient collection of documents, it didn't develop in a vacuum. 
So the spiritual culture of the nature uh, of the nation of Israel would have been influenced by many of the other cultures surrounding it. So the culture of Babylon, for example, the culture of Egypt. <clears throat> so the thoughts and the feelings expressed in the prayers will be saturated with cultural influences for all those nations surrounding this, the, uh, the nation of Israel. So why are we talking about the book of Psalms today? Well, um, this is the first day uh, that our churches, our bricks and mortar churches, have been allowed to open. So it is a cause for celebration. And we have committed to continue with our online services at the same time, which are reaching vast numbers of people um, who would never traditionally come to our churches for a whole range of different reasons. Both of those things alone are reasons to celebrate. Um, so surely today should be a day of pure praise and worship. But as I've said before, I can't help feeling deep inside me that's not all it is. And perhaps something else, we should be doing something else also, something a little more foundational. Perhaps today is also a day to lament. Now, lament is an old word. Uh, it's a word we don't use very much anymore. But I think for the season we're currently going through, it is a good one. Because the word lament means a passionate expression of grief or sorrow. And I think beneath our celebrations, there is an undercurrent of lament running through not just churches, but through our country. There is lament amongst parents and grandparents who've been cut off from their children and grandchildren. There is lament among those who are still self-isolating and don't know what their future hold. There is lament among those many people who would have had essential medical treatments postponed because of the crisis. Those who've had their income slashed or lost their jobs and are now worrying about their futures or their ability to pay their mortgages. There will be lament amongst children who are missing their friends from school and whose exams have been disrupted and have been unable to visit colleges or universities or think about their future. There will be lament among wedding couples whose marriages have had to be postponed um, and have no idea really quite when that will change. There is lament among so many people who are worried about their own health or the health of those they love. And of course, there will be massive amounts of lament amongst those many, many people who have lost loved ones. There is so much to lament, isn't there? So very much. And the truth of the matter is that all of us are not out of the woods yet. The virus has not magically gone away. It's still lurking just over the horizon. At any moment, we could be back in lockdown again. So as we celebrate here in our churches, we know that our celebration may be short lived. And we're also aware that many people who would normally be amongst us in churches will not be in churches. We'll still be watching the online service, which is great. Um, although many people have been unable to do that because they do not have a computer or their Internet is not sufficiently powerful enough. And they, too, of course, will be lamenting. Now, we people in the UK are pretty rubbish at acknowledging our emotions, aren't we? It's considered to be un-British. And actually, our churches are a part of that. How often in church do we say to other people, how are you doing? And they reply, fine, when actually they aren't fine at all. And yet the reality of the matter is, surely it is when we come before God of all times that we can be honest about how we are feeling and to cry out to him, what is going on? You see, the thing is, I don't think we can move on to really celebrate until we've acknowledged that we are also lamenting. We must acknowledge the pain and the hurt of these last three months or so. We must pause for a moment and examine how we're feeling now and understand how that sits deep within us. We have been in the wilderness, my friends, a place of pain and a place of struggle, and some of us are not out of it yet. 
Time and again in scripture, we see individuals and even whole peoples who spend prolonged periods in the wilderness struggling. And that is where so many people have been. And as I say, some people still are. We cannot hide from that. But time and again, of course, we also see in Scripture that good things can, can come out of that time spent in the wilderness. Even blessing is made possible as a result of struggling and suffering. One of the big questions of theology, of course, and one I've covered several times in our Wondering Wednesday series in our online services, is how could a good God allow evil? And one of the things we considered, not as an answer, but as a possible suggestion, was that times of suffering can bring forth blessing. Not that God causes suffering, but God can redeem it and make it into something good. And that is why we need to lament. And that brings me, of course, around to the book of Psalms. You see, the book of Psalms, as I've said, is a collection of collections, roughly five groups of Psalms. And those begin quite clearly with lamentation, with individuals calling out to God. Why have you forsaken me? Why are my enemies allowed to get away with these things? What is happening? Why am I being punished? The questions that we are all forced to confront when we are suffering or those that we love are suffering. Now, in the 21st century, lament is a road less travelled. We try to avoid it because it is a dark and scary place and we want our lives to be like the covers of a magazine, glossy and bright and cheerful. But deep down, of course, we know that is not always the case and that can make the world a lot more scary. Lament asks difficult questions of our faith and of God. It challenges us to acknowledge the bittersweet irony and nature of life. But it also makes space for honesty in our lives and in our struggles and in our faith. And if we let it, it can open the doorway to honest conversations with families, with friends and, of course, above all, with God. The truth is we cannot just bounce back up and out of this dark season that we've been in. Through lament, we can examine the jagged corners of our lives and then hold them up to God for healing. Lament is holding on to reality, but also hoping for the grace that God continually promises us. Perhaps sometimes we worry if we look too deeply into the darkness, we'll become consumed by it. But the book of Psalms tells us otherwise. As we read our way through the book of Psalms, each section subtly changes. And light gradually overcomes darkness as the, as the psalmist moves from lamentation finally through to praise. But it takes a while, my friend. In fact, it takes all 150 psalms before the psalmist reaches true praise and true worship. And I don't think perhaps we're quite there yet. But that's OK, because we can journey on through lament, safe in the knowledge of where our destination is, but honest about where we might be right now. And of course, we have much work to do in our particular circumstances at the moment. So this morning, I'd like us to pause for a moment to reflect on all we've been through, to acknowledge that this is still a time of struggle for many people and that it may not, not entirely be over for quite some time. And to let that change us, to let that strengthen us as we celebrate this one small step forward. Let's pray. Father God, give us the courage to lament. And give us the strength to walk the journey like the psalmist through all 150 psalms until we reach that point of praise and joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. So now is the time for our intercessions. And our bidding this morning is, Creator God, we cry out to you. 
in the response, hear our prayer. Lord God, creator and sustainer, we thank you that our church buildings are open again for worship. And we thank you for our online congregation that joins us here today in the curate study. We engage in this day of celebration also in the full knowledge of the cost to so many lives. And we hold before you the memory of those who have died and the pain and the loss of so many families and friends due to this dreadful virus. And we hold a moment of silence in respect of this great tra tragedy, not just for our nation, but for the world. And we acknowledge the lament that we all feel. Creator God, we cry out to you. Hear our prayer. Creator God, we remember those many people whose hands and minds have worked to keep this country going and so many countries going. The nurses and the doctors, the delivery drivers, bus drivers, care workers and shop staff. We thank you for their dedication and courage. Help us to never take them for granted again. Father God, we cry out to you. Hear our prayer. Creator God, we thank you for the intellect and skill of the scientists and researchers seeking treatments and maybe even a cure for this terrible virus. And we ask that it be found swiftly and circulated widely so that every country, no matter how poor or, or remote, might have access to it. Creator God, we cry out to you. Hear our prayer. Creator God, give us the wisdom to be vigilant in our own lives to the continued risk to our society from the virus and help us to keep those most vulnerable in our parishes, in our communities, in our families and our friendship circles safe. Creator God, we cry out to you. Creator God, we thank you for the work of the volunteers in this village and throughout our mission community, those who've collected food and medicine, baked and cooked, donated food and cash, and loved their neighbours as themselves. Creator God, we cry out to you. Creator God, there has been much loss and tragedy in this period of lockdown, but there has also been abundant love and compassion. We ask that you would enable us to never forget the loss and the cost, but to build on the love and service to make our community, our country and the world a kinder and better place for all, no matter their colour, religion, language or culture, class or occupation, gender or sexuality. Creator God, we cry out to you. Hear our prayer. And as we look forward to the new, let us say together the prayer which joins us with our Christian brothers and sisters all over the world today, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now it's time for our next hymn.
It's been wonderful to spend time with you again in the curate study. Um, I hope you're still enjoying the Sunday services. As I think I said last week, be assured, although our church services, our bricks and mortar ch uh, um, churches are restarting today, this online service will continue. So wherever you are uh, and whoever you are and why ever you're here, please continue to join us. And as I say, if there is a way in which I can serve you better as a member of my online parish, please do email me at from the curates study at gmail.com that we, whether you have prayer requests or just general questions and also don't forget no matter where you are if you would like to join in our telephone uh, prayer services both the mission community service that will be happening next tuesday the 7th or the one that happens every thursday morning to say doesn't matter where you are if you email me at fromthecuratestudy at gmail.com, I will send you details on how you can join in so you can share fellowship with Christians in these parishes and beyond to pray together. So now a final blessing. May Christ who makes saints out of sinners and who has transformed all those who have gone before us raise and strengthen you that you may transform the world. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love today and always. God bless you, my friends. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Goodbye.